Hello and welcome to Six and Stone Cigar Podcast. I am your host, Ebony Lincoln, and this is my girl, Tracy Crow. Hello. We are here to bring the cigar bar to you. Uh, today we're going to be talking cigars and, and, and cocktails as we always do. Um, and again, as you know, it's always about crashing ceilings, breaking barriers, and tearing down the stereotypes around cigars and cocktails that make people think that they're only for men. We're here to tell you that cigars and cocktails are for everyone. So today, um, before we get into it, we want to remind you about uh, following us on social media. We encourage you to click, like, share, subscribe, and follow us at Sticks and Stones Cigars on YouTube, Instagram, Facebook, TikTok. And also, for those that use Patreon, we ask that you follow us there at Sticks and Stones After Dark which is for subscribers only. You'll be able to listen to us on all streaming platforms. And last but not least, if you are smoking and drinking with us, we ask that you we ask that you act responsibly as you do so. So as we get into it, first of all, we would like to introduce our guest, Miss Ingrid Brown. Hi, Ingrid. Who's hey. a newbie to the cigar scene. Yes. And we're going to get into her background in just a little bit. But before we do, let's talk about what we are smoking and drinking today. Tracy, what, okay. are, you, what are you Okay, so today I'm doing something light and sweet. It's a cherry bomb, bomb cigar, and it's paired with Grand Marnier. All right. What are you smoking? I, I'm new to this. So I'm being introduced by you guys about yes. the importance and the... And the relevance of cigar smoking. Yes. So, uh, Tracy, what did you choose for I me? I chose today? a groovy blue. Groovy yes. blue. Yes. And it's really yes. smooth. That's does, good. Yeah, I'm enjoying it. And it's it. fruity. Yeah, and, 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 and it's fruity, too. So, awesome. Um, yes, and I'm drinking something with... Um, vodka pineapple. Vodka pineapple. Is, is there, I don't know if there's an official name to it, but it's delicious as well. So. Awesome, awesome. <laughs> Thank so you, I, ladies, for taking care of me. Yes, absolutely. So, we'll... We'll try to help you out along the way. Yes. Um, you know, we have been smoking cigars for a few years. Actually, oh, Tracy's been smoking it long, smoking longer mm-hmm. than me. But we are all about trying to help one another out. So that's Absolutely. what this, this podcast is all about. Cool. I am smoking the Davidoff Nicaragua Robusto. Mm-hmm. It's being paired with a spicy um, pineapple margarita. So... Um, and today we are here at Red Phone Booth, and we're just having a good time. So let's get on into it. So we are joined today by Ingrid Brown, who is the founder, president, and CEO of a tech startup called Condigo. Am I saying that right? No, it's Codigo. Codigo. Okay. Codigo. Put the Codigo. T. Codigo. Put the root of your. I'm Codigo. Codigo. Yeah, I'm fluent in Spanish, so Codigo means code in Spanish. Okay. Yes. All right. So, so it's a tech startup. So tell us about it. You started this in the fall of 2019, yes, right? So started, talk to us about that. Yes. So I started the tech company and pretty much been utilizing my skills from consulting over the past 17 years. I'm telling my mm-hmm. age, but past 17 years and then trans, transitioning something, some things into adopting new some of the newer technologies. So, you know, uh, the, the tech uh, arena is very heavily dominated by males, mm-hmm. by white males. Mm-hmm. And so I'm forging myself into the space where they are. Yes, so, yes. Do it, sis. Yes. <laughs> I, we love that. We yes. love that because that's what the podcast is all about, yes. us crashing or breaking through ceilings and doing things that are typically male-dominated. Absolutely. So, um, what's your, what have been some of your challenges and some of the barriers that you have faced? Well, you know, uh, you know, first of all, I don't look at things as barriers. I see them as opportunities. Yes, love it. And so, you know, it's just something else for me to overcome, for me to conquer, so to speak. So, um, of course, being an African American female, first mm-hmm. of all, and if you're looking for funding uh, or to do uh, startup to, to obtain startup capital, you know, African American women literally get about one percent of the funding offered to startups, right? Mm-hmm. So, barely nothing, right? Right. right? So. And uh, especially in comparison to our white co- counterparts. Mm-hmm. But um, in addition to that, you know, I really, um, ex- except for the pandemic that everybody experienced, my first project was before I even launched. Mm-hmm. And, yeah, I didn't even get a chance to really launch, and I had an opportunity. 
uh, uh, from a very, very well-known businessman in Phnom Penh, Cambodia, came over here to the United States, was doing a tour. They asked me to come just do a presentation around tech, right? Yeah. Just a general presentation. And before you know it, he loved what I was talking about. And three or four months later, I was in Phnom Penh for two and a half months. So, wow. yeah. How was that? I, uh, Cambodia. Didn't want to come home. Oh, really? No, everybody thinks Cambodia, while it does still have, it's, it's an emerging country. Yeah, I wouldn't right. say that it's necessarily uh, a third world country anymore. Mm-hmm. I think it is absolutely still has some challenges, mm-hmm. but it's one of the most beautiful places I've ever been. Wow. And it has some places in it that can rival Vegas, right? Wow. I'm okay. not exaggerating. Okay. Um, we didn't want to leave. Wow. Did not want to leave. We actually tried to extend our plane ticket and glad that it didn't go through because the pandemic hit mm. yeah. like a few weeks after we would have been stuck, you stuck been there. there. Yeah. yeah. We yeah. would have been stuck. So yeah, but, um, that came when I, when, before I launched that opportunity came mm-hmm. and so, um, we were on a roll Yeah, and my business didn't start necessarily here in Nashville in the United States. No. I, my first account was an international That's awesome. account. Mm-hmm. So and we were over there helping to establish, um, establish tech that just hadn't been touched here, but it's touched really? there, but it's been here for years. Y- yeah, yeah. Um, t- umpteen years, yeah. right? I want to dial it back a little bit. You're from Greensboro, North Carolina, yes, right? Yes, I am. So what advice would you give your young self or to young women wanting to get into the tech field oh, and man. some of the other things that you're doing with entertainment right now. What, what advice would you give to your younger self? Man, avoid the distractions. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. There's so many things to distract you, especially boys. <laughs> yeah, for sure. For sure. You know That's good saying? advice. That's good Try advice, me. no matter what you're trying to go into. Yeah, also to engage your passion, but mm-hmm. also do the things that allow you to live and make money first, yes. too. Yes. Right? Okay. I love this advice. You know, that's, that's what I'm doing with my daughter. Like, yeah. She's yeah. great at theater. She can write, yeah. and she can read the heck out of a script, and she's athletic as hell. How old is she? She's 11. Faster than the boys. Been mm-hmm. that way since she was it. younger. Her name? her name is Abby. 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 Yes. Hey, shout Abby. Out Abby. Abby. Yeah, shout out. <laughs> hey, baby. Yeah, so say no to the distractions. No distractions. Do something that's going to make you money yes. and engage your passion. Engage I your passion. I love that advice because mm-hmm. you got to live. You know, passion is Period. important cause, because when you do something that you're passionate about, it's not really work. Right. But at the same time, you got to live, right? Right. So I love, I love the advice. Before we um, transition to the crow's nest, I just want to talk a little bit about the film festival that you're a part of. Yes. Mm-hmm. Um, I, I think that is fantastic. I, I've been... I participated in small portions of it and hope to participate in more as, Mm -hmm. you know, as we come out of this pandemic. But, you know, I was thinking about this interview and the fact that we've been stuck in the house bored for, what, over a year and how important movies and documentaries have been to us, you know? Absolutely. Saved our lives. They brought you out of a depression. Yes. Yes. Absolutely. Talk to us about the film festival and what what your role is in it. Um, With the film festival, I am... The chief operations officer. Mm -hmm. Um, I helped uh, my mother to Mm. found the film festival. So it's truly a family family affair, along with my sister, Ivy. We specifically work at the International Black Film Festival. We specifically Mm. work with independent filmmakers. So stuff that happens like this organically, right, Mm -hmm. you know, is is, is where our heart is, right? So um, just understanding the importance of people and their passion and the ability to create stories in our authentic voices, right? Mm -hmm. Super important, super Mm -hmm. important. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, we do independent film. We do red carpets. We bring in celebrities. We do master classes. Of course, the parties that happen. Yes, yeah. And um, and people need it, right? And mm-hmm. so, um, during the pandemic, you know, the industry was stifled, mm-hmm. right? Yeah. Everybody was at home. When I right. say yeah. everybody was at home, mm-hmm. everybody, everybody was, was at home, home. and production mm-hmm. stopped last year. We did a virtual festival last year, mm-hmm. and people were very appreciative mm-hmm. that um, that we didn't just you know stop. And so right. we have an we feel an obligation. To to our to our community, to our filmmakers, to the world, to ourselves, to make sure that these stories you know continue and that they get out there. So, you know, so what's the timing of the film festival this year? If the film festival is October. Oh my God! Good. It's going to be in the October fall. October third to the fifth, I think. Okay. Oh, think that's good. All right. We just want to thank you for your time. Thank you for your talent. Thank yes. you for 
you know, just supporting uh, Six and Stone Cigar Podcast. I'm we will certainly you have guys. you back. And uh, we look forward to supporting the film festival later I'm this year. I'm excited. I yes. love it. Yes, and congrats on your success with your tech startup. I oh. think that's amazing. Oh, well, yes. thank you so much. Thank Absolutely. you. Absolutely. So, Tracy, what's up with the crow's, tra- crow's Nest this week? Okay, so let's talk about to crock or not. Mm. That is the question. Mm. So now, okay, crocs have been around for quite some time, and now they have emerged again. So now... The celebrities, certain celebrities have now caught on to this, and now Crocs has reached out to them, and they have, like, developed their own Croc, and they're back. Um, you can see them anywhere you want to buy online. They range from anywhere from 35 to 49 99 But the real question is, do you wear Crocs or not? Mm. For me, I have never tried a pair on. I have never had a desire to be flat-footed, if you will. But... Now that I look at it and my age and the way that my job is set up with running around all day long, I am open to a pair of Crocs. Okay. okay. How do you feel about that, Ingrid? You know, I have never purchased a pair of Crocs. I, I, have, I have worn somebody else's. <laughs> <laughs> Were they comfortable? They, are, they feel like plastic. Right. I mean, Thank you. Right. Yeah. They are, I, yeah. You know what I'm saying? They yeah. Are, they, they, it's but now this, that you got the Nicki Minaj. flip flop person. Me too. Uh-huh. I love a flip flop. But now you got Justin Bieber has his own that sold out within a day. Nicki oh, Minaj wow. had hers that sold out within a day. So there's an awareness now that everybody, every celebrity now will have on the best, nicest outfit. And you look down at their feet and it's a crop. Wow. Mm-hmm. I have not paid attention to that. Shout out to Crocs. Okay. Mm-hmm. Well, Send you know. Send me a pair, please. Yeah. And I think, I think that's the impact. <laughs> that's the impact of tech. Social it media, is. really. All of it. I don't All think it's it. about the croc. Yeah, it's not. Yeah. You know, it's, it's, it's about cultural. spreading a trend. It's a trend, and For we all want to be trendy. We all want to be on on top of everything. Yeah, so. Absolutely. And absolutely. if for forty nine yeah. ninety nine, it's very affordable. So yeah. Yeah. why not? I, yeah. For me, I can't do the croc. I can't do the Crocs. Um, <gasps> I had a pair purchased for me for Christmas. I'm sorry. What color I, were they? They were I mean, red. You know, I'm a Delta. Shout out to the Deltas. I did too. But at the same time, yeah, I don't really. It, it, I I love comfort. Don't get me wrong. As I love we get heel. older, we love comfort. Absolutely. I love a flat. Yeah. I love. I love a wedge. You know, a wedge, mm-hmm. something that's comfortable. But I still need it to be cute. Right. And I'm like, eh, this is not my zhuzh. I I think they are great for kids um, because it is a kick around shoe. You can do a lot in them. But I tried it on. I don't find them comfortable. I'm like you. I don't think they're comfortable at all. I've never tried a pair on, yeah. but I'm willing to try it on and yeah. try to be on trend. Now, I will say this. They have, they do have croc flip-flops. They do have croc sandals. Yeah. And those, to me, are a little bit more appealing because they're kind of cute. And but they have yeah. the ones with the fur in them, too. Yeah. So. yeah. Mm-hmm. So, but just the traditional crocs, eh, I'm good on those. But give me some with a little style and pizzazz. I'm all about the crocs. That's all we have today for our pop culture. All right. Well, thanks thanks for um, the crow's nest, Tracy. We want to talk real quickly about our cigars and our cocktail pairings. Absolutely. So just want to rate what it is that you're smoking and what it is that you're drinking. And just tell us about the, the flavor and uh, the intensity of the cigar, whatever you want to share, Tracy. My cherry bomb is my go-to. Um, it's It's got vanilla. It's got cherry and black currant in it, and it's a very mild cigar, cigarillo, let me say that, from the Dominican. And for me, if I get home from work, I just want to just relax real quick. I really don't want to smoke a real big cigar. Mm -hmm. I'll do that outside on my patio, and I'll pair that with some Grand Marnier because I like to drink sweet alcohol. So it's a perfect way to end the day. Mm -hmm. And you, my dear. Well, of course, you guys know I'm smoking the Davidoff um, Nicaragua Robusto. So I love this cigar. It is very robust. So it's not it's not for the newbies. It's not for people that are really not into cigars because there's no real sweetness to it. Mm-hmm. Um, but it is definitely robust and it's a stronger cigar. What I like about it is um, that it has a, a spicy taste to it. So that's why mm-hmm. I kind of paired it with this pineapple, uh, red pepper, uh, margarita because the spice kind of goes together. But it, it starts off with a little bit of cr- like cream and toffee taste. And as you get a little bit further into it, it becomes very spicy, especially toward the end. And we all know that the cigar gets really good 
in the middle and mm. toward the end. Oh, yes. yes. I'm learning. Yes. That's when it gets really good to you. But I, I love this cigar because it is it has that boldness to it. And you know that you're going to get a good smoke out of it. And like you said, it's not a quick smoke like yeah, the Cigarellos. It's, it's going to take you about two hours to really, really smoke it. Hence the fact that we haven't I haven't smoked this one all the way down. But it is a, I'd call it a medium to bold cigar in terms of the strength and the profile and the things of that nature. But definitely a cigar that I would recommend. So if I had to give it uh, a rating on a scale of one to five cigars, I'd give it a five. It's up there. Okay. Oh, yeah. wow. Yeah, well, what would you give yours, Tracy? A 4.5. Okay. It's right. my go-to. And I know you're newer to this. Yeah. But what would you give the rating, uh, rating for your cigar? My cigar was, I mean... Very smooth, wasn't distracting. So for me, as a new person that's just trying this, yes, it was, it was, it was very smooth and very. Um, it didn't have a you know like a heavy texture mm-hmm. or something that was disruptive to me. Yes, like, yes, so it was just smooth. It was great. Okay. So one to five, how many cigars would you give it? Uh, I would give it four and a half. There you Yay. go. Yeah. Yes. So whoever chose this was great. I did. That would be Welcome. Tracy. <laughs> thank you, Tracy. That would definitely be Tracy. <laughs> well, we just want to thank you again for being here. Thank I you. Love really every minute of your it. time. We don't take it for granted because we know time is a very important commodity uh-huh. for all of us. It is. Yes. And it's limited. Yes. Right? Yes. So reminders to everyone that's out there, just want to remind you to click, like, share, us on all social media platforms follow us on all streaming platforms if you've been drinking or smoking with us today we ask that you do so responsibly and last but not least we want to give a shout out to the red phone booth which is where we are filming today and recording today um and just thank you so much for being with us god bless you good night Bye. bye